Okay, guys, we are live. So welcome everybody to the Zoom class tonight. My name is Dr. Kelly, and this is our class on navigating gut health. And I'm here with my oil doc sister, Dr. Kemi. Hey, everybody. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen. And uh, the class is pretty comprehensive, and it's probably gonna be about an hour or so. Hi, Emily. And so um, we will have time for questions on our Oil Docs and More Facebook page or our Instagram page if you want to contact us later. Okay. So um, stay tuned, guys. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get started. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay, can everybody see that? Okay, so this is a class on navigating gut health, understanding the mysterious universe within. My name is Dr. Kelly and I'm here with Dr. Kemi, my sister. And who we are, uh, just to tell you a little bit more about us, um, we're both sisters. Uh, we went to chiropractic school together. Um, we are holistic chiropractors and oil docs. What we like to do is focus on the root cause of disease. So what that means is if you came into our offices, we are going to locate and identify the physical, mental, emotional, and chemical stressors that's related to the health challenge that you're coming in with, okay? And uh, we provide classes, books, workshops, and trainings to help people to get in the driver's seat of their health and healing. So as you can see, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram on Oil Docs and More. We have a podcast, Oil Docs Talk, and our books can be found on Amazon.com and our trifold brochures on OilLife.com. So we're gonna talk about what is your microbiome anyways? So there's this wonderful video we're gonna play for you right now. It's in you, it's all over you. It is you. Your body consists of an entire ecosystem of diverse and helpful little bacteria, more than 100 trillion of them. This is the human microbiome, and it means that we each have a troop of good bacterial superheroes to call our own. Did you know that the greatest concentration of bacterial superheroes lives in your gut? This ecosystem of microorganisms is a huge part of who you are. Your microbiome aids in food digestion to fuel your body, influences your mood and energy levels, helps you adapt to your surroundings to protect from harmful organisms, and much, much more. Scientists have only just scratched the surface of understanding how incredible these little guys truly are and how important they are to our health. It all started when you were born. Some of the bacteria in your mother's microbiome were passed along to you to become the beginnings of your very own microbiome fingerprint. When you were a baby, experiencing the world for the first time, the bacteria in your microbiome were doing the same. By the time you were a toddler, Makeup your gut microbiome was almost fully matured. At two or three years of age, your bacterial superheroes had already established a natural, balanced state. Did you know that diversity is the key to a healthy microbiome? In a forest with only one kind of tree, what would happen if a beast came along and ate up all the leaves? All the creatures in the forest would be affected. In the same way, diversity is also needed in the bacteria of your gut. Scientists have discovered that your microbiome fingerprint actually means that many different types of bacteria that keep you strong, healthy, and resilient to drastic or harmful changes. Did you know that a healthy microbiome likes balance? When your microbiome becomes unbalanced, 
You may become unhealthy and even susceptible to chronic disease. But with the help of your superheroes, your microbiome always strives to return to a natural, balanced state. Eating pre and probiotics can help your superheroes to be more effective in keeping you healthy. Your microbiome plays a starring role when it comes to this. From digesting food, to affecting mood and energy levels, to preventing invasions by bad microorganisms. Your superheroes are working hard to keep your gut healthy every minute of every day. The Canadian Digestive Health Foundation wants you to understand that a healthy microbiome means a healthy you. Understand. Take control. Live better. Watch the other videos in this microbiome series or visit cdhf.com. It's in you. Okay, Dr. Kemi, take it away. Excellent. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. Perfect. So I think that video did an exceptional job of really explaining the basics of the microbiome in case you've never really learned about it before. But I want to dive in a little bit deeper for you guys. And I want to ask a few different questions and paint a picture of where your microbiome comes from. Did you know there's 100 times as much bacterial DNA than your own DNA in your body. So literally, you are technically only 1% human. To clarify this, there are more foreign cells in the human body than cells that we get from our mom and dad. So that's what I'm talking about when I say that you're literally only about 1% human. Our DNA produces about 20,000 genes and our microbes in our gut produce somewhere between 2 million to 20 million genes. Think about that for a second. That means, like I stated, we are less than 1% human. So given this information, do you think, I don't know about you, but I would agree, that we should start paying closer attention to our gut health, which is what you're doing today. So awesome job. <laughs> so let's talk about how important our gut bacteria are. Right now, they're literally controlling levels of inflammation in our bodies. They're controlling the permeability of your gut and leaky gut, they're controlling your brain chemistry, your hormones, your metabolism, your nutrient levels. They're controlling what you absorb and what you don't absorb. They're controlling our biological rhythms. They're controlling our sleep cycles, our circadian function. They're the first ones to metabolize all the drugs that we take in. So really spend a moment and think about what I just said. Did you realize that your gut microbiome has to do with all of those things that I just talked about? These are literally the most important things in our life that are controlling our health. We now know that through all the current research. And the fact is, we have completely ignored them for a long time. However, that's the beauty of research. It is now starting to catch up to how important the gut microbiome is in our entire lives, how it affects our entire lives. So the video talked a little bit about summarizing about where our microbiome comes from. But let's dive deeper. To fully understand the microbiome, we really have to understand where it comes from. We have to trace it all the way back to birth. And actually, better yet, let's go a few months prior to birth, prior to being born. What bacteria were our parents exposed to? How did we come into this world? What happened after that? The answers to those questions are the beginning of what shaped your gut health to this moment. We now know that a healthy microbiome transfers downstream generationally. So that means our seed colony comes from our mom. While we're in utero, the baby's microbiome is already being developed by the mom. Her microbiome health at the time of birth is super important. The reason why the result, this is a result of her gut health and the bacteria she's exposed to in her diet, household, and overall environment. The intestinal permeability is tremendous at this point during pregnancy. It's an open communication system with mom's nutrition coming in to feed every part of the baby's body. So think about how important that is, right? There's an open communication system, intestinal permeability. That's what that means. Researchers have concluded the vaginal microbiome changes during pregnancy in anticipation of the baby's journey through the birth canal. How amazing is that, right? If you measure the bacteria in the vaginal tract of a woman and then every month during every month for pregnancy, 
you're going to see that there's a significant change at month eight. For example, there's a bacterium called Prevotella that all of a sudden is flourishing in that eighth month of pregnancy. Why is that important? Well, to me, this is so fascinating and it's so important to understand because this happens, basically what happens is Prevotella, the bacterium, kind of gets down in the gut and it says, okay, baby, here's the code of the mammal that's about to feed you, mom, right? Let's get your digestive system working and up and running for preparation for this food you'll be eating, right, for the rest of your life. Time to close those tight junctions of intestinal permeability. You're not in the womb anymore, coming up soon, right? So when you have this intestinal permeability, one of the, thing, one of the things that helps so much, if possible, is to be breastfed. That's the, that's, we hear that all over. We understand that is one of the best ways to bring a child into this world if you can breastfeed, right? And luckily we have help for that, right? Have lactation consultants and all different groups that we can get help with learning to breastfeed properly so that we can give that colostrum, right? The first three days, colostrum is found in the mother's milk and that is loaded with good bacteria and many different messages going to the baby, helping with that intestinal permeability. So when you are born naturally, you're inoculated with the mother's microbiome. Literally, this might sound kind of crazy to some of you, but the baby's face is smothered in beneficial bacteria that that baby is going to need to survive and thrive the rest of its life. So some people might be listening to this and some people maybe have thought or are thinking right now, oh, goodness, you know, I tried everything I could, but I ended up with a C-section or I, I, I have to have a C-section. Any, any of you who are listening to that right now, it's okay. There is something you can do. It's not the end of the world, right? One of the things that you can do, you can ask for, and you, you can research this a little bit more, but what is actually becoming fairly common practice for people who have a, a definite understanding of the gut microbiome and the importance of it from birth, they are doing a procedure that involves a very, very simple vaginal swab being taken immediately after birth and by a doctor or a nurse, right? And that swab is being smeared on the faces of infants to inoculate the baby, right? To get that seed colony off to a beautiful start. Another thing you can do is let your child be around animals. Having animals in the household is one of the best things you can do. I know we're very protective of our babies, especially newborns, right? Um, but literally coming up letting a, an animal that you have come up and lick, you know, lick your infant. You know, some people might not be okay with that, but it actually is so beneficial as is letting your child play in the dirt to introduce them to your local flora. That's all so important. And there's a lot of research on that and we won't really get into that. So let's kind of go a little bit further and talk about the first six months to two years is when we lay the foundation of the gut microbiome. So therefore breastfeeding, like we just talked about, and the way we feed our children the first two years is absolutely critical. When we talk about breastfeeding, Breast milk can actually contain up to 700 different species of bacteria. So again, super important for the overall gut health of the child growing up. After the first two years, our gut microbiome is it's kind of relatively stable. It's, it's building and it's, it's pretty stable. And it fluctuates within its environment. When you take antibiotics, that's going to alter the state of it, of course. Um, it's going to be less biodiversified, right? Because antibiotics kill both good and bad bacteria. So for example, if you're hospitalized, you have an injury, you eat a lot of junk food, of course, that will also adversely affect the microbiome too. We also know that environmental toxins adversely affect our microbiomes, which this is another area where essential oils are gonna shine because why? They provide safe, natural, and even therapeutic solutions. So they help rid your environment of toxic chemicals that are in most households right now, right? That can cause detriment to your overall gut health and therefore your overall health. So eliminating simple, you know, everyday things that you use, for example, hand soap, get rid of the antibacterial hand soaps and get yourself some on guard hand soap. It's just a smart thing to do. It's one of the very first things that you can do to create a healthier home starting literally tomorrow. We know there's been many studies and one of the most recent studies showed that BPA exposure found of course in certain plastics, right? In the first four months of life can change the microbiome permanently. So let's try to eliminate as many environmental toxins as possible. So there's a lot of research on that. But the good news is some of you might be listening to this and saying, oh my gosh, my poor child, I didn't know any of this. And now they're growing up and it's okay because 
we now know that your diet within a very short period of time, days actually, it can change its diversity. So there's so many different things that you can do. And we're going to talk about a lot of that here tonight. So leading up into the next slide, we're just going to talk a little bit about the teenage years, right? Going into the teenage years, the early adult years, we become older, right? And our immune system becomes a little less effective. Then at that point, the microbiome can start become, it starts becoming less diversified and more pathogenic. So that's one of the best times to really get a hold of your gut health, right? As that shift is happening. That may lead to one of the key factors in the way we age is how our microbiome interacts with our body and the way our immune system does or does not interact well with our microbiome. There appears to be a reciprocation and that may play a huge role in longevity. And that is according to the latest research on gut health. And get this guys, this, I found this absolutely fascinating and um, very heart wrenching at the same time. Um, I, I cried. I'm going admit to admit to that because I'm human. You're all human. I'm human. But I recently saw a study that literally made me cry because what they have now concluded so this is conclusive research was conducted specifically about how pancreatic cancer is caused by the gut microbiome because we now realize, okay, we realize this, this is a fact, this is the research. It happens from the leaky gut moving into the pancreas, shutting down the immune system. When I read that research, I cried. And the reason I cried is because this really hits home for Dr. Kelly and I. We lost our dad, a strong New England Patriots bodyguard, just not too long ago with pancreatic cancer. No idea. We had no, it, it, it blindsided us. So it really is personal to us. So if I sound passionate, if I sound excited about the stuff that I just talked about and what we, we will be talking about, it's because it is so close in our, it's so close in our hearts so close to our hearts and it's so deep within our souls that we have to share this information based on that research alone, based on all the facts that are coming out about gut health, okay? In general, it is our responsibility and it would be negligent if we didn't share this information with you. So here we are tonight and thank you for being on, right? The other thing I want to share with you, which also hits a little bit close to home, unfortunately as well, is there's now published research from the Mayo Clinic talking about breast cancer also having a direct correlation to the health of the microbiome, okay? And last year, and the reason that hits home for us is our mom had breast cancer as well. So really hits home double, right? Research just last year gave conclusive evidence that liver cancer is also being caused by the gut microbiome. So when you start to think about all these chronic diseases, there are clear signs showing where this is coming from, and I will say this right now, this has got to stop. We can no longer ignore the importance of our gut health. So here we are tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, great job there. Thank you. So how can you tell if your gut health is out of balance, right? After hearing everything that Dr. Kemi just spoke about, you want to know, is your gut health out of balance, right? So go ahead and look at all the different things on the slides right now and think about how many of those you can relate to, okay? Constipation, mucus in the stool, thyroid conditions, bad breath, weight gain, parasites, bloating, loose stools, fatigue, strong body odor, food intolerances and food sensitivities, I mean, that's a huge one. A uh, gas, coated tongue, headaches, diarrhea, anal itching, mood disorders, skin rashes or eruptions, psoriasis, abdominal cramps, fungals and yeast infections, joint pain and inflammation, and eczema. So add yours up. What is your total? Okay. So how does your gut health become imbalanced? So we are going to be talking about some physical stresses, some mental and emotional stressors, some chemical stressors, and if you want to reduce your symptoms and improve the function of your gut health, you need to address all three of these stressors. So first, let's talk about the physical stressors. 
And again, emphasizing that it's a combination of all of these that can affect or adversely affect our gut health. The physical stressors, working long hours without a break, right? Not taking that time to breathe, relax, reduce your stress response, right? Long hours without a break, working in a physically demanding environment, being on your feet all day, not getting a good night's sleep and shift work, that can really affect you because most of our healing and reparation, repairing of the cells happens between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So if you're not getting a good night's sleep and your, you know, your shift, everything's off, it is going to affect your overall health, your metabolism, your gut health, everything, okay? Sitting at a desk all day absolutely makes a big difference. We know that, of course, there's so many benefits. If you can get up and walk around or maybe have a standing desk type of a setup, there's a way more benefit in that because you're getting that blood flow, that circulation. You're, you know, there's a lot that goes into that, and that's not what our topic is tonight, but that's an important factor. So sitting at a desk all day can absolutely affect you. Not taking enough bathroom breaks not listening to your body when it needs to eat, rest, or hydrate, and not paying attention to your body when it tells you to stop and rest. Listening to your body is one of the number one things that you can do to help your body. Your body knows what to do. Your body's very intelligent. Just listen to it, right? Yes, and some research suggests that over 90% of all diseases can be traced back to the gut. Hence, what Dr. Kemi was talking about earlier with the latest studies they've done on the gut health. Okay, so mental and emotional stressors. When I first moved into my office um, about 20 years ago, I put this sign right on my um, wall. The body weeps the tears, the eyes refuse to shed. Okay, this means that if you don't process an emotion from beginning to end, then it's going to show up in your body. Now, I don't know about you, but when we're younger, imagine we're at church or we're at a place where we need to be quiet and we're wiggling around in our seat because we're little kids and we've got all this energy. And, you know, the mom shushing us, the dad shushing us, we're getting the, you know, the evil eye, like, you know, stop this, don't do that. We don't get to, like, we get frustrated and, you know, and then we get talked to and then we get yelled at and then we don't process those emotions. Plus, never mind trauma and everything else that gets stuck in our tissues. So, the body weeps the tears, the eyes refuse to shed. All stresses create inflammation in our gut. And the following feelings and emotions are actually stored in the gut. So, if these are left un unattended, they cause additional stress and inflammation in your entire body. Okay? So, this is all inflamed thinking. So, unwilling to accept or allow change, okay? In other words, being stubborn. If somebody is unwilling to change and they're not going to adapt, then that's going to show up in their gut. My way or the highway thinking. I mean, how many people do you know that feel like it's my way or the highway? I don't want to hear about it. This is the way it's going to get done. Indecision or inability to figure something out. Okay, that's another big one. Um, now, how about this one? Wanting or hoping for a change, but then not taking action when the opportunity presents itself. This is like digging your heels in. Um, a good in in instance would be if you um, decided you're going to start dating again. And, you know, you, you get this date and you're ready to go. And, you know, you're getting all afraid and you're digging your heels in or... Um, possibly you want to get a new job and you have this great job opportunity. And then when it comes to doing the job interview, you're like so nervous, you're digging your heels in, you don't want to go through with it. And sometimes people cancel altogether. That's going to show up in your gut. Now, other mental and emotional stresses that impact the health of your gut would be Caring for sick relatives or, um, or loved ones. And this is huge because, again, you know, a lot of times when all these things on the screen happen, we put our own self care out the window. And uh, Dr. Kemi's going to be talking about some chemical stresses in a minute. And we, t we tend to turn to those chemical stressors when we are taking care of other people. So, caring for sick loved ones, relatives death of a loved one, staying in an unhealthy relationship, um, just working in an un unfulfilling career or work, um, not really enjoying what you're doing for a living. Financial stress is absolutely huge. Divorce, um, heartache, betrayal, 
lack of self-care, and lack of joy in life. So your gut bacteria produces GABA, which is a neurotransmitter that assists us in chilling out. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this video below, and it shows 11 signs of suppressed emotions. Now this video is, it, it won't talk to you, you need to read it, okay? So pay special attention to the screen, catch as many as you can, and then when you listen to this recording again, you can pause it at any point in time, okay? So don't feel like you're gonna miss things. Okay, now we're going to talk about some fun facts. So, gut feelings are produced by the 500 million nerve cells that make up your second brain or enteric nervous system. Your gut has so many of its own nerve cells that it can still function even if it's separated from the spinal cord. How amazing is that? And 95% of serotonin, or the happy chemical, is produced in the gut. And while antibiotics kill the bacteria they're designed to, they also kill the good bacteria in your gut, completely destroying the balance in your microbiome. And last but not least, an imbalance of healthy and unhealthy microbes may contribute to, health, to weight gain.
So if you're somebody who uh, struggles with stub and weight or mood disorders or immune system disorders, you want to look for gut health first. Excellent. All right, so let's talk about chemical stressors. The health of your gut is directly related to what you put in it, on it, and around your body. So looking at the list below, we're gonna go over that in just a minute. But remember, your microbiome is completely unique to you. So literally, every time you pick up that fork, right, every forkful of food has a place in determining your overall gut health. So these are some of the food stressors. When we say chemical stressors, these are contained within the foods that we eat every day. Refined vegetable oils like canola oil, corn and soybean oils, refined carbs, we all understand that, processed refined carbs, cookies, crackers, cakes, chips, the list goes on and on, right? <laughs> processed foods, pasteurized dairy products, conventional meat, poultry, and eggs, and for various reasons, those can wreak havoc in our systems, added sugars, trans fats, hydrogenated fats, and artificial sweeteners all big ones that affect our overall gut health. Another big one, so some environmental stressors. We all understand, and this is another area where essential oils are pivotal as far as your life goes, right? So we have so many consumables, right? Things that we use every day that simply can be replaced with so many more natural options from doTERRA products, right? Like I talked about earlier. So when we talk about antibiotic usage in food and medication, there is so, we are all getting so many antibiotics, which we all understand. Again, now antibiotics are great when you need them for something very specific on an occasional basis. But I mean, think about this. How many times have you been or taken your child in um, to your doctor, to a doctor, and gotten a prescription for antibiotics when we know, and, and doctors have admitted to this, I have friends that have admitted to this from, from long ago that said, yeah, absolutely, I would prescribe a, a prescription for antibiotics, even though I knew it was a viral infection, because that's what the parent insisted on and wanted. So sometimes that, that does occur, guys. So the overuse of antibiotics has now caused antibiotic resistance. So this is another area where oils beautifully shine because we can use oils, essential oil support to make our bodies healthier and our bodies will not and do not develop a resistance because of the chemical complexity of essential oils. We don't have to worry about that resistance. So antibiotic usage and food and medication is a huge one. Dioxins from water bottles, shampoo could, I mean, that list goes on and on. That could go on probably 20 different <laughs> items, right? I don't need to read it to you. Water bottles, alcohol, preservatives, fast food, all of that. So all the chemicals, right? Pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, you know, again, on and on. Toxic chemicals in the cleaning and household products. Again, we have our whole online product line, right? Uh, on guard, sorry, product line that can help with that very, very problem heavy metals, toxic food chemicals, and synthetic vitamins. There we go. Plug in the lifelong vitality vitamins. You don't know what you're getting if you're not really well-researched with vitamins. We actually did a podcast on lifelong vitality. Again, our podcast is Oil Docs Talk. You can find us on all the major platforms where we explain what's really going on in the vitamin world as far as what is actually allowed to be put into our vitamins, what's okay, what's you know just kind of looked over as being, uh, okay, generally safe, right? So do your research. And if you want to listen to the podcast, you're going to learn a ton of information. But again, synthetic vitamins, you won't find that in the lifelong vitality, mold from homes and the environment, parasites, viruses, bacteria, and spirochetes. So those are some of the environmental stressors that can definitely affect your gut health. Yeah, and then toxic cleaners and antibacterial soaps destroy our gut microbiome. So choosing to use essential oils in both your cleansers and soaps is an intelligent choice to avoid daily exposure to toxic substances. And again, we have that whole entire on guide line for that.
How the gut and the brain communicate has fascinated us for centuries. The gut-brain axis transforms information via the vagus nerve from food to feelings. Once eaten, digested food particles enter the small intestine, which is covered with a velvety layer of villi. Each villus is lined with a single layer of epithelium. This layer is made up of different cell types. One of them, the enteroendocrine cell, is unlike the others. It is our gut sensor. In addition to communicating through hormones, it is covered with enteroendocrine cells, also synaptic nerves, including the vagus nerve. We call those enteroendocrine cells synapsing nerves, neuropod cells. It sends them back to their environment. It sends chemical, thermal, and chemical stimuli such as nutrients or bacterial byproducts in the gut. Inside neuropod cells, signals from stimuli are converted into tiny electrical pulses. These pulses propagate via synapses onto the afferent neuron of the vagus nerve. Vagal neurons carry the sensory information to the brain stem, making the signal generated inside the small intestine of the brain. The neuropod cell connection with the vagus nerve serves as a conduit for food and gut to influence brain function in seconds. This connection is also a potential point for the pathogen that connects us to the brain. This new knowledge is a foundation for designing therapies to treat disorders related to modern gut brain signaling. Okay, so now that you know how your gut microbiome becomes imbalanced, how do you correct it, right? That's probably why most of you guys are on this podcast, uh, podcast, sorry, we're so used to doing podcasts, on the Zoom call tonight anyways, right? So in order for you to um, make corrections to your gut microbiome, you really have to address the physical, mental, emotional, and chemical stresses one by one. Um, so here we go. Um, also, I just want to point out that um, on Oil Life, we do have this gut health um, trifold. It's six pages, full color, and um, pretty much goes over everything that we talked about tonight on the Zoom call. And then to the left is our Oil Docs and More Protocol book, and that is actually on Amazon.com. Okay, talk, take it away, Dr. Kemi. All right, so gut health solutions. The beautiful part about essential oils is they address all aspects, right? All three types of stressors, physical, mental, emotional, and chemical. They're super, super effective in every one of those, right? Essential oils are made of volatile aromatic compounds or molecules that originate from the seeds, leaves, bark, flowers, roots, and resin of plants. They've been used to enhance human potential, optimize health, and support physiological checks and balances forever, right? <laughs> Throughout the ages. One of the most intriguing aspects of using essential oils is the ability for them to influence the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being all at the same time. And that's huge, right? With zero side effects. So beautiful, right? So let's talk about some solutions. Let's talk about peppermint first, because peppermint there's going to be a few products there and they're all going to be used, recommended to be used in uh, the same way. So you're going to choose out of these oils that we're going to list, choose two or three of the oils that we're going to talk about. You're going to use a 10 milliliter roller bottle. You're going to combine 10 drops of each oil with fractionated coconut oil. And remember, I know most of you probably know this right now. Um, some of these oils can be used neat or you know, by themselves, but well, especially peppermint, you should pretty much always dilute that. But you want to use a carrier oil because it's going to be more effective that way. It's going to get into your bloodstream more and be more effective. And there's not going to be that off-gassing that you would you lose a little bit of that oil when you use an oil neat. So try to always combine it with fractionated coconut oil. And remember, fractionated coconut oil, there's a lot of different carriers, but fractionated coconut oil is very great because it, it remains liquid at all temperatures, right? So it's excellent for that use. And it's, it, it's pretty, um, it lasts quite a long time. So after you combine 
10, uh, 10 drops of each of these oils that you choose, whichever ones you want to choose. You're going to roll that bottle over your lower back, your entire abdomen area, and the bottoms of your feet. Now, why your lower back? Why do we recommend that? We recommend that because your nervous system, right, that exits through the spine, controls every cell, every tissue, and every organ, wherever those nerves go. So it makes sense to rub over your lower to mid back, right, that your spinal region where those nerves exit the spine. So that's why we always recommend, of course, we're chiropractors, we're, we cannot neglect the spine. So you want to roll it over your lower back, over your abdomen, and the bottoms of your feet. Peppermint is amazing. I think we all can probably talk about peppermint for the rest of the night, right? Just alone. But how it affects your gut health, it affects your gastric motility by relaxing smooth musculature, which can help with so many things, the digestive issues, right? Gastritis, gas, bloating, and intestinal discomfort. Peppermint is a huge one and really should be in all of our arsenals, right? It's amazing for so many reasons. The next one we're going to talk about, again, the instructions are the same. So choose a couple of these oils, whichever ones resonate with you or um, whichever ones you have. You may not have all of them, but fennel, it assists in proper digestive function, proper liver function and circulation. It helps with edema, okay, and fluid retention. It reduces cramps and spasms and supports the body during stressful times. Oh goodness, clove oil, another amazing oil that just has so many uses. But when it comes to gut health, we're gonna keep it real simple here. Super high in antioxidants. It supports the immune system, the digestive system as a whole. And it's also great for tooth pain, cavities, metabolic support, and ridding the body of parasites. So clove oil, amazing. Another amazing one. Ginger, another amazing oil to help with gas, bloating, spasms, and cramps. Nausea, morning sickness, heartburn, acid reflux. Such a great warming oil, right? It can be used for so many different things, specifically all of these complaints, when you're having gut health issues, it can help with some of those, um, some of the symptoms that you're feeling. So ginger is another great one. And lastly, one of our personal favorites in our household, I can't tell you how many roller bottles I make on a regular basis. I say that because my daughters, I have two daughters, 14 years old and 10 years old. And especially our youngest one, she is, um, she's so, she's obsessed. She could smell digest on wherever she goes. But um, it's always with us because she has some very minor, but some dairy sensitivities at times. Um, and this has been a lifesaver. I mean, it's literally kept her in school versus having to leave school every day. So she keeps it on her. She uses it right before she's about to eat anything that she might be a little bit sensitive to, but digest then is, is specifically formulated for this purpose, you know, purpose, right? It's scientifically formulated to help with bloating gas, heartburn, nausea, indigestion, all of those things. It helps with reflux. It can help with little ones, little babies with colic. It helps with all sorts of things, colitis, IBS, motion sickness, and travel sickness. We had taken this on, we were invited to speak about um, essential oil science, safety, and sourcing, along with some other topics we were um, asked to speak about on a cruise to the Bahamas. So we had a lot of digest then for that purpose, travel and motion sickness. And we did so well when that boat became a little bit right when it was a little rocky out there um we this was our go-to so so digest then any long car rides um excellent excellent for pets as well right pets who just don't like being in the car or can't be in the car or um you know for different reasons digest then is excellent perfectly formulated for this purpose Okay, now GX Assist is another great one. Um, this was fantastic for Candida. And um, the essential oils that's actually in the GX Assist is oregano, melaleuca, lemon, lemongrass, thyme, peppermint, and propylic acid. Now, this one is one that we only take for about 10 days and then we get right back on that uh, PB Assist. But uh, GX Assist is a blend of essential oils that support a healthy gastrointestinal tract by decreasing the overgrowth of pathogens in the gut. It increases the gut integrity and creates a healthy environment for new beneficial bacteria to thrive.
So you go ahead and you use it for 10 days long, you kill off that candida, and then you start taking that PB assist to help plant the new seeds. Here we are, PB assist. So PB assist comes in um, a double encapsulated time release probiotic, and that's the one that's on the top there. There's a little bit of a green in it. And inside that capsule, you actually have a prebiotic in there as well. So a prebiotic feeds the probiotic and it's encapsulated in there. And then down the bottom there, you have PB assist. And that's a powdered encapsulated for little kids, but I like to say it's um, for big kids as well. So it tastes really good. And it's like in a pixie six stick uh, style. So it, it's fantastic for the little kids to um, replenish their microbiome if they tend to eat a lot of the sugary snacks and the chemicals and foods that we talked about earlier, or if you know that your household doesn't have healthy products. Okay, um, Terrazyme. This is a huge one for me. I'm gluten intolerant, so I absolutely love using Terrazyme. And a lot of my patients, um, when they do go out to a restaurant, because they don't know exactly what's going to be in some of the sauces and in, in some of the, um, the condiments they might be using or the spices, they will bring the Terrazyme with them. Uh, you like to take two capsules, two to three capsules per meal, but it's a blend of several active whole foods enzymes that break down proteins, fats, carbs, sugars, and fiber. And this allows the body to have better digestion so that your nutrients are absorbed better, okay? And it's also supportive to a healthy metabolism. So, eat up. So healing foods to support a healthy gut microbiome, okay? And the ones that we have starred are actually prebiotic foods. So you can take a, a look at the list there. I'm not going to read them all to you, um, but these are the, the great foods that will help to support a healthy microbiome. So check out all those things. And what I like to do is when somebody does have challenges with the gut health, I like to have them, you know, scan through this list and see what their guidance system is saying. And um, whatever you feel called to eat, go ahead and choose that. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about healthy habits. Eating a variety of food is going to be pivotal, okay? A diverse microbiome is an indicator of good health. We've gone over that already a lot, right? Eating a variety of healthy foods, fermented foods, and prebiotic foods is pivotal. So a combination of those is going to give you the best results. Prebiotic foods feed the good bacteria in your gut, the probiotics. So a rule of thumb, and this is something so important to remember, because do you, do you know those people in your lives um, who buy the giant kombuchas, right? And they will drink it practically the whole thing in one day. They're just drinking kombucha all day long. And uh, they, they really feel like they're, they're making a huge difference in their, in their lives. And I'm not saying that kombucha is excellent for you. However, what you really want to do, if you really want to maximize, because the goal is creating a diverse microbiome. So that means getting sources of, of probiotics, right, from, uh, from different sources. Diversifying your sources will diversify your microbiome. So the rule of thumb is you want to choose two prebiotic foods from the list that Dr. Kelly just showed, with the, the ones with an asterisk, with each meal, ideally. So choose two of those with each meal. And you want to treat fermented foods. And this is the key right here. The biggest piece of advice I want you to remember when it comes to fermented foods, treat them like condiments and use them on a rotating basis. So if you were to go into my refrigerator, you're going to see all sorts of uh, ferments. You're going to see um, crotito, which is kind of like a spicy sauerkraut. You're going to see sauerkraut. And, I, and that's a whole other conversation. I do make those myself. There are store-bought ones that you can, can get that have um, somewhat of a profile, right? A, a, a bacterial profile, not as good as homemade wild ferments, but it's better than nothing, right? So you can buy them if you don't have time to make them. You can absolutely buy them. So you'll see that you'll see some homemade yogurt. Typically, I don't have any made right now, but homemade yogurt again, because it's a wild ferment. So there's going to be a lot more different you know, available cultures in there, um, back to a better bacterial profile. And you, you will see kombucha as well. And that's just kind of off the top of my head. And my cupboard houses the PB assist, the terrazyme, the, you know, our probiotics in general from, uh, from Joe Terra. So 
you want to treat these fermented foods. So what I will do is I'll just kind of take the, say, sauerkraut, couple of forkfuls of the sauerkraut in the morning. I actually, I say that I do intermittent fasting. So my, my window opening is what it's called when you first start eating for the day. I like to open my window with a, um, a ferment if I can, if I have it with me. So I'll take a couple of forkfuls of sauerkraut or curtido or whatever, and I'll rotate that. It's not always the same. It actually, it varies. So then maybe I'll take a bite of yogurt and a little sip of kombucha. So you just need a little bit because a little bit goes a long way. And it's, di it's your diversity that you're creating that is so important. So have all that stuff available, but just kind of change it up, right? And, it's, it's, and, and naturally, you probably want to do that anyway because you get bored of the same things, right? So still get your kombucha or make your kombucha. My, my SCOBY, which is what sort of the start of a um, kombucha is, um, it's a pro, anyway, mine passed away. I no longer have a SCOBY. So I need to get a new SCOBY, which is how you make kombucha. Um, so I buy store-bought kombucha, which is still beneficial, right? So use these foods on a rotating basis and you just need with the kombucha, like it says there, you only need a few ounces before each meal. And, and if you have a lot more than that, you know, sometimes people have had adverse reactions to too much kombucha because it does have a high sugar content and um, you do have to be careful with that. Uh, another important um, going on yeah, to actually the first thing you do is we take a bite of food, take smaller bites and chew your food. I know you've probably been told this since you were a child, right? And you probably tell your children that you want to chew your food a lot, 20 to 30 times, right? That can improve the health of your gut immensely. That's the very first step of digestion. It's so important, right? Chewing this, now why is this important? That is your very first start of your gut health, right there. It is so important due to this amazing enzyme called salivary amylase. And salivary amylase gets into all of your food so it helps with the saliva in general, which is mostly made of water, but it also contains mucus, electrolytes, antibacterial compounds, and substances called enzymes, right? That's, a, that's what salivary amylase is. And it infuses the food you're eating with this salivary amylase, which is a huge part of the digestion process and digestion of starch specifically. So super important. You wanna chew your food, and that's what it does, okay? So practicing this greatly enhances digestion, allowing better nutrient absorption along your intestinal well. So chew your food and you're off to a great start just doing that. Okay, another one, and I know that you've been told this by everybody before, but lace it up, right? So daily exercise is a great way to improve the function of your gut health, right? When we're standing around, when we're sitting around, our gut motility isn't as um, proper as it should be. So exercise decreases inflammation and increases that digestive motility. But some studies also show it may change the composition of the gut microbiome itself. And then um, last but not least for healthy habits, hydrate, 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 right? So drinking plenty of water will help to relieve constipation, decrease gas and bloating, and help your digestive system function more effectively. Um, I like to say to aim it to get at least half your body weight in ounces. Now I'm gonna say something here is probably gonna be absolutely disgusting. However, I have a lot of patients that will not drink water and this is what I tell them. So if you have a sensitive stomach, just, you know, kind of tune me out. But I like to tell them, have you ever tried to flush a toilet without having water in it? Okay, just like put that thought in your mind, have your toilet backed up, and like, there's no water, right? So let's give your, uh, let's give your digestive system some help and um, keep that water flow going. All right, so solutions for mental and emotional stressors. Now, these are actually exercises to do. So I'm gonna talk through the exercises, but what I want you to do is when you watch the replay, pause them, okay, and go through the exercises yourself. So the body weeps the tears, the eyes refuse to shed. We've already gone over that. Um, but when you're at home and you play back this Zoom call, I want you to think about when you read this quote, what does this bring to mind? Okay, how does it make you feel? When I say the body reaches the tears, the eyes refuse to shed, 
what comes up for you, right? And do you think you have issues in your tissues? We all do. So solutions for mental and emotional stressors. Okay. Um, during times of high mental and emotional stress, it's helpful to perform these exercises. So this is called an emotional release exercise. And it helps you get in touch with your gut feelings because emotions are energy in motion. And these particular emotions wall themselves off in your gut, hoping to gain your attention. Okay. So do these exercises when you're really feeling um, like unwilling to accept change. If you're feeling like you're being stubborn in a situation. In my way of the highway thinking, um, indecision or inability to figure something out. And then wanting a, or hoping for change, but not taking action when the opportunity presents itself. So here's the exercise. Again, we're thinking about all these different uh, feelings. So being stubborn, not wanting to change, my way or the highway, wanting change, and then you, you stick to your guns. So where is this showing up in your life? Is it showing up in your personal health? Is it showing up in you, your nutrition, your exercise? right? You know you need to exercise. You know you need to change your diet. You know you need some self-care and rest, but where are you being stubborn, right? Or you can't figure out what's going on with your health and healing, right? That energy of I can't figure it out. So where is that going on? You know, career or work, you can't figure out what you want to do for a living. That's another big one, right? Creativity and hobbies, finances, learning and education, spirituality, home life, relationships, social life, personal growth. Where are these emotions showing up? So journal about how and why they're showing up and then write down five action steps that you can take today in order to feel better and move forward in your life, okay? So then there's some, a bunch of oils down below and I want you to go ahead, choose one to two of them, put a drop in your hand with fractionated coconut oil and then rub it over your belly. Okay, and um, again, to change our state of being, we have, to, we have to change how we think and how we feel. Now, this is something that is rules of the road in our dream and drive book, but our thoughts create our feelings. Our feelings drive our actions, inactions, or reactions, and that produces our results right? And that's what shows up in our bodies as well. So to change our state of being, we have to change how we think and feel. How do we do that? Well, right? Oil up. Positive affirmations increase your feel-good hormones and build new neural connections in your brain. Now, this has to be done on a regular basis. Do it for 21 days. Do it for 30 days. And when you do these exercises on a regular basis with either frankincense, lavender, or rose rubbed between your eyebrows, every single time you smell frankincense, lavender, or rose, you get those new neural connections in your brain to form new habits. Habits are thoughts that you keep thinking. Beliefs are thoughts that you keep thinking. So the more you say these positive affirmations over and over again, the more you will believe them. So a couple of my favorites, you can read them, but I release the need to control the outcome of every situation. That's a huge one, right? I allow myself to be supported by others. It's safe for me to allow change. And when I listen to my intuition, I make good decisions in life. All right, guys, we are coming up on the hour. Um, it's 8.58. I just want to say thank you for attending. Um, we can be found on Facebook and Instagram under Oil Docs and More. And we have more classes and workshops and trainings. Uh, Dr. Kemi mentioned earlier, we do have a podcast called Oil Docs Talk. And uh, we are part of the Oil Life Educational Series. We have uh, these trifolds on gut health, arthritis, and thyroid. And we have seven more coming. And we also have some books on Amazon. You can see those below. Oil Docs and More Protocol Book, Dream and Drive, Buckle in and Oil Up, because the key to health and healing is creating a life you love. And also my uh, body scan technique, which uh, supports the body with essential oils and bioenergetic corrections. So I'm going to stop my screen share. Okay, everybody. I'm just going to.
All right. So thank you everybody for attending. Dr. Kemi, do you want to say anything else before we go? No, just thank you so much for joining us and we'll, we'll see you again with our next class. Okay. Thank you everybody. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.